This video will cover question four of the tutorial questions looking at free body diagrams um, and static structures from the structures course notes. The approach taken in this video will be similar to the previous video in question three, but we'll still make sure to go over all of the details and explain the steps in the calculation as we go through them. So here we have a desk or table that's supporting um, an entertainment system and DVD player and television and what uh, combined entertainment system and DVD player, which is what it's quite old fashioned now. And we are given indications of how much load is due to the entertainment system and the TV that were shown where the reaction forces are taking place and the supports to the unit and we're given all the distances between these forces that are applied and as usual this type of question we're going to draw a free body diagram first of all which will simplify um, our structure into a horizontal line we'll draw in all of our forces as they appear in the diagram and we'll include all the distances between them as well and that will be our starting point that we use in order to calculate the values of the reaction forces R A and R B. So let's start off with a straight line just representing the structure of the unit as it is in the question. So this is what our, our unit with our equipment is reduced to. And as um, before, we have um, reaction forces. R A and R B. I do think here for today that that does imply we're calling the ends of the unit A and B, and I'm marking the two loads that are applied here: 100 newtons here and 350 newtons here, and let's mark in all the length as well. So between A and 100 newton load, we have a 0.5 meter distance. Between these two loads here, we have a one meter distance and between the 350 and the point B, we have 0.5 meter distance. You might notice in my diagram, these maybe don't all even look like they're proportionate, but this is not a scale diagram. It's not important to draw things accurately as long as we use the numbers correctly. So as before, our approach is going to be to take calculation of all of the clockwise and anti-clockwise moments at one end of the beam. Now it's not because it's an end of the beam we're doing this. We're doing this because we want to take the moments at a point where we have an unknown force. And in this case, the unknown forces are A and R B are at the ends of the beam. And because we looked at R A point A in the last example, question three in that video, we'll look at point B here and I'll mark it the red dot here just so you can see what I'm referring to. When I take all my measurements to this part of the question. So what we're going to say here is that at point B, all of the clockwise moments, so that is the forces um, in the question multiplied by the distance they are away from point B that would turn our unit clockwise if there was no support in place are equal to the sum of all the anti-clockwise moments. And we've got to think about which is which here. Now, if we look at point D, this red top, looking at on the left-hand side, the 100 Newton and 350 Newton force acting down the way, well, if the unit could spin around point B, they'd be pulling that unit in an anti-clockwise direction. So the numbered forces, the ones that we know the values of, must be our anti-clockwise moments. And R A is pushing up the way, and so again, if we could spin the whole thing around that red dot, R A would be pushing our unit clockwise around that point. So we've got one clockwise moment due to R A, and we've got two anti-clockwise moments due to 100 newtons and 350 newtons. So let's break these in then. So on the left-hand side, we have just R A, and it's multiplied by the distance from B to A. So it's 
0 0.5 plus 1 plus 0 0.5. It's the whole length of this unit, and that adds up to 2 metres. So it's not just um, an individual gap, but a marker one, just so you can prove this. It's this whole distance here. That's what we're multiplying RA by, because that's the distance between B, the point we're considering, and the force at point A. Our two anti-clockwise moments where we have 100 newtons, that's going to be multiplied by 1.5, because again, this is the distance from B to where the 100 newton force is applied, it's 0.5 plus 1. And we've also got an anti-clockwise moment due to the 350 newton force. And that's, well, that's exactly this is in the question, that's 0 0.5 meters away from B. So we can tidy this up a bit. We'll have two times RA is equal to 150 plus 175. So two times RA is equal to 325. So RA must be equal to 325 divided by 2, which is 162.5 newtons. And so using um, our equilibrium equation for a moment, we've been able to work out what one of our forces is. Now we'll use another equilibrium equation about static structures um, to find RB, because we also know, and this isn't particular to any point in the structure, this is true of the whole structure, that all of the forces acting up must be equal to the sum of all the forces acting down the way, because otherwise it wouldn't be static, you'd be moving up or down, or the desk, or you'd be collapsing under the weight of things on it, possibly. So these forces balance out because it's not moving. So our two upward forces, are only in our these the reaction forces, the legs of the unit, the unit supporting it, are equal to the 100 plus 350. That's the total downward forces. So RA plus RB is equal to 450 newtons. Well, we've worked out RA already, so we can say 162.5 plus RB is equal to 450. So RB must be equal to 450 minus the value for RA, 162.5, because RB has to make up the difference. And doing that calculation gives us a value of 287.5 newtons as our value for our beam. And that concludes question four from the story sheet.